So basically, how sex magic works is um, we use our sexual energy to elicit a manifestation into our reality. When you're in that state of O, oh, it is really where you become your truest self, in my opinion, where you're free from pain or um, anxiousness, you're free from um, stress or doubt, and you really just become in a state of suspended bliss. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rhiannon. If you're new here, this is the place where we talk about spirituality, witchcraft, the occult, and how those things mix into everyday life. So if you're into that, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out, and let's get into this topic for the day. Today is actually one of my more favorite topics and I'm super excited to get into it. Today is all about sex magic and the divine sex priestess, the inner sultry sorceress that is within you and within me and each and every one of us. This is a super fun topic and I can't wait to dive more into sex magic and love workings and and just in embodying more divine feminine archetypes. So let's get into this. In the ancient past, during the days where goddess worship was the main thing, where there were whole civilizations actively worshiping goddess and the divine feminine, the term virgin was actually a sexually sovereign archetype. And I find this so crazy and so amazing and really the way I view what virginity is. Nowadays you would see virginity as a person who is chaste, who does not have sexual intercourse or relations or does not act on those deeds. However, these women these archetypes, these virginile goddesses, these virgin archetypes, they were not chess. They had free sovereignty over what they did with their bodies. What it really was is that they were unmarried and they were free to do with their bodies what they will. They had a complete say over themselves and who got to take part in that um, part of themselves. In some civilizations, they had these higher duels or sacred prostitutes that would um, help to worship the goddess. So people would come to the temple and they would want to worship the goddess, the divinity of femininity, and they would um, work with these priestesses who would help sexually liberate them and help them to really connect to the divine through sexual energy and the act of um, sex itself. I myself see virginity as definitely being sexually sovereign and independent. And when you think about the Virgo archetype, the I see it as being very erotically independent and um, not just virginile and innocent, it's just very independent in itself. So that's kind of where I correlate those things and how it makes sense to me. I find sex magic so liberating, especially if you think about where we are in modern day still. Um, we're not as far um, progressed as I would hope us to be by now, um, but us living in a very patriarchal world, there is this skewing of divine femininity. Even just the general lens of how people view femininity and people who identify as women um, as being less than and not as powerful. And back in the day, you know, we, we ruled it all. We had... Um, we had the power, this woman have the power of creation within their bodies. However, people who identify as female, um, being the trans community or just femme presenting people, um, 
they have that creation life force within them as well. All people have a creation life force within, within them as well, I believe. You just have to tap into it, and that is in that sacral chakra area where your sexual energy surges, and you just have to tap into it. We all have that divine feminine and divine masculine within us. I'm not saying you have to be a cis person to tap into the divine femininity within you or the divine masculine within you. You can tap into both no matter how you identify. Living in such a patriarchal world, they really don't want us to be sexually liberated because if we had that, there'd be so many different things throughout the world that would really rapidly start to be solved where as of now with our insecurities um, prevent us from stepping into that power that we rightfully have as a birth right so i firmly believe if you step into yourself and own your sexual liberation and how you express then you really are truly grabbing onto your own power. Whether you are on the spectrum of someone who can feel and experience or wants to experience sexual pleasure or physical touch in that way, even if you are on the spectrum of being an ace person um, who more so doesn't want to interact with a sexual um, deed in any capacity, depending on how you feel you're comfortable, um, you can still tap into your divine femininity um, or the, the healing and creation energy. For people who are non-binary and may not even experience spiritually divine masculine or divine feminine at all, it could be just the energy of creation and um, creativity and um, like sexual energy. It doesn't have to be a feminine uh, related thing. So just I'm just saying divine femininity for the purpose of this video. Um, however, you can view it however you relate to it. In yourself. So how do we get started with sex magic? And this is definitely something that I'm fully ready to do a entire ongoing series about because uh, as I learn more and experience more for myself, I definitely um, want to share more and I just find it so interesting. So definitely let me know if you like this idea for a series. Um, message me on the community board or comment down below this video and let me know if you want more subjects. Let me know if you want me to um, expand more on the subject, and I definitely will. I might still do it anyway, but if you really have like a want for it, I'll do it a lot quicker. So how do you get started with sex magic? First off, I want to talk about consent and the boundaries around that. Now everyone's going to have their own um, inner compass when it comes to that and their own morals around it. Just like when you're formulating your own morals around witchcraft and practicing if you want to do baneful magic or not, for example, you have to develop your own moral code around that. Um, however, when it comes to tapping into someone else's energy, I firmly do believe myself, this is my belief system, that you should have permission if you are going to use anybody else's energy. That is their life force. That is basically, I'm definitely someone who is a proponent for consent. So when it comes to something of that nature where you are accessing somebody else's life force, somebody else's inner power, someone else's sexual energy, it's theirs and theirs alone. It's up to them if they share that with you and they want to work that with you. So it's totally okay to um, do sex magic with a partner or multiple partners. However, you need to, I believe, have permission. Otherwise, it's just as bad as the you know what word, in my opinion, spiritually on a spiritual sense. So I definitely just don't. I think it's good to go ahead and um, do things without permission when it comes to another person and their sovereignty. But everyone's going to kind of develop their own worlds around that and I can't really change that um, no matter how much I would like to. So 
you kind of have to develop your own moral code but do definitely um, think about what I said and why that would be so important how would you feel if somebody would take your energy and your life force without your permission um, and that goes to be without said, most people would not allow other people to take their life force and their energy and their sexual power um, for who knows what, for, for what purpose. And um, a lot of people might be okay with it as long as you like give them a heads up and let them know every time. And then sometimes people just won't care over time and they're like, you know what, just do your thing. But, you know, some people might find it a boundary um, overstep if you are in relationship with them and then are thinking about another thing. Um, I know for myself, if I wasn't told about it, it would hurt my feelings and make me feel like I'm a used tool as opposed to a person that is interacting with you and is trying to spiritually like be with you. So getting started for beginners, depending on how comfortable you are with any physical touch at all, either self-touch or someone else, you need to kind of like sit down with yourself and see where you are at on that spectrum of your comfortability. Do you feel that you're able to be sensual with yourself and not even just overtly sexual? Are you able to just be sensual and soft with yourself? Are you able to experience soft touch and enjoy it? instead of just experiencing it as a movement? Are you able to feel the touch of the skin and understand and feel like some type of pleasure over it? Um, this is something that I love massage for. I do self-massage quite often, especially on face. Uh, I love face massage whenever I can um, while I'm doing my skin routine. Um, it really helps one to help you remain youthful and it is just a relaxing thing. It helps to drain all the chemicals out of the face and through the body and um, helps to get rid of swelling and all of that but it also helps to get in touch with your body and who you are and feel grounded within yourself. So if you're not super comfortable with even being sensual with yourself, not overtly sexual, but just sensual and enjoy like the experience of it all. Getting really Taurus energy in this where you are really enjoying every scent, every sight, the touch, the taste, the smell, the um, visceral experience then I would work on doing that I would set a scene for yourself um, make it really romantic or vibey for yourself put on some non-distracting music that you really enjoy in the background like light some incense for yourself and I would just work on just like being present in yourself even if you have to start off with looking in the mirror in your eyes every day for five to ten minutes and speaking affirmations of love and um, adoration for your body and for what it does for you starting off there is excellent and then working your way up to um, enjoying like a self massage even just hand massage on the arms on the shoulders after a long day is an amazing practice for yourself and then over time you may become more comfortable with being able to do self-touch and self-pleasure and um, that's when the real magic actually starts to take play I would explore textures and this is something that I suggest doing with every partner you have because everyone's sexual like responses is different and it really just helps to improve the experience for everyone um, so for me I really like the touch of light feathers on my skin so just like a feather boa or something like that is really nice the feel of cool metal on my skin so handcuffs is a good thing for myself um, just exploring those type of things weightedness is also like a thing I really found I enjoy so like something that's heavy that drips down is nice or um, just really soft so like faux fur um, um, like light whips and stuff like that those are all 
great textures. Some people might like the feeling of latex or rubber. Um, some people might like the feeling of um, the back of the paddle. So you want to explore kind of different textures and see what you like and where you like it and kind of create a love map for yourself, for you. And then if you would like to share that with your partner for them as well. So I would suggest creating the scene and making it a sacred space for yourself. If that means creating a protection bubble around yourself, I would definitely do that. Cast a circle. You can um, use incense and you can have food like strawberries or aphrodisiac foods that you enjoy and enjoy that or have an aphrodisiac tea while you sit and read and just deep breathe and then just make it a whole experience for yourself do self massage and then if you'd like to get into the physical um, act itself you can do that so basically how sex magic works is um, we use our sexual energy to elicit a manifestation into our reality and it doesn't have to be sexual or relationship based it can be anything you want it could be an apartment it could be a career it could be a friendship it it really what it is is when you're in that state of o it is really where you become your truest self in my opinion where you're free from pain or um anxiousness, you're free from um, stress or doubt, and you really just become in a state of suspended bliss. And that's where I believe the creation um, can really um, meld together and bring things in and pull things in like a, a huge vortex for you. Something I really like to do when I Something I really liked to do a few years ago was have a jet tub bath um, where I just let the jets like rub on my feet and massage the bottom of my soles and just sit in the bubble bath. Um, sometimes I would just have like a glass of wine. Um, now I understand why like moms in TV shows would do this all the time with a book and just like spend some time with themselves and this is something I really enjoyed. I got like... Um, like really expensive nice chocolates for myself once in a while once in a blue moon and they like, had like the expensive sea salt on them with different like fillings that I enjoyed because I really enjoyed the surprise of flavor and I would have like a glass of white wine and I'd sit in the bath and just take time and space for myself we show up so much for other people it's so important to just show up for yourself and really just refill your own cup so while you're doing that you're enjoying every morsel of that snack that you are having for yourself that special treat the crunch of the chocolate the sound for me um, a lot of people enjoy asmr one for sexual things or two just for relaxation and stimming purposes um for me i I like all of it. I like certain sounds, so it really is like satisfying to me to have like a good crisp crunch sound. Um, I like chocolate cracking apart, um, hearing the salt crush under my teeth, um, that uh, salty tang in my mouth mixed with the sweet. Um, those two experiences are really awesome for me and just kind of enjoying those and having a visceral experience and maybe even like pairing wine with it that complements like a dessert wine like I do which helps bring out the flavors of the fruit in my desserts. You basically want to seduce you basically want to seduce yourself is what I'm getting at here and make it an experience for yourself. And then as you basically come to climax or your big O, you're going to start to think about the manifestation that you want and have it in mind already ahead of time so you know exactly what you want and just visualize it if you're a person who are eight. and just visualize it if you're a person who is able to visualize otherwise you can speak it out into existence and describe it in as beautiful detail as you can and um as you're climaxing you um basically visualize it and then stay remained in that suspension after everything's finished out and just breathe belly breathe in your stomach and just um 
visualize and imagine or speak out into existence what it is that you really truly want and during that um, climax the the big O it's going to push out this energy from your sacral area out into the universe and create a ripple effect and bring that manifestation to you quicker that's basically how sex magic works now you can use it in so many different ways you can use sigils um, that's something that was really easy for me um, when it was hard for me to visualize so what I would do is create a sigil of my manifestation and draw it out and then I would just put, pin it on the wall or on the dresser across the room and I would look at it while doing my ritual and then when I finish I would look at it and just speak out what I wanted um, so that's a really easy way of doing that as well now glamour magic is totally part of sex magic I feel they are two sides of the same coin uh, glamour can be used for beauty can make you feel beautiful and sensual or it can make you feel powerful you can use glamour so you can also dress yourself up do your makeup in a way that you find is super sexy and attractive that makes you feel comfortable um, you can dress yourself in a way where you're dressed up a little bit but more comfortable and sultry and seductive something that makes you feel like you're in your own power another thing that you can do if you are so inclined is you can set up a venusian altar a love altar or you can set up your room your bedroom with your partner or with yourself into to be the theme of the venusian vibes the vibes of venus and aphrodite um to really help hone in those energies that's something that i actually uh, do like to incorporate into my workings is uh, decor in my life so in our living room we actually have our walls painted like this bright um burnty orange and it just really helps create energy in our living room um and really create like creative energy where we are um, energized and vibrant and are not feeling overstimulated or feeling tired in that room it really helps us to live in our living room and you can do the same thing for your bedroom you can create a color palette and completely decorate your room or create an altar space like a beauty altar if you like where you get ready every morning in your room or in your witchcraft space and i just feel like it's a beautiful practice to um, dedicate as well and you can place uh, a place for the goddess of love that you choose to work with in that area if you'd like to and it's just a, a really nice way to welcome their energy into your space and like i always um say i saw this in a book a long time ago i don't remember where if you guys know where it's from definitely let me know so i can give credits in the notes um but sexual magic is the same as creative magic it is the same thing it creation and um uh, sex and arousal energy is the same thing as creation it is what brings um, babies into this world and it is also what can manifest your greatest desires if you really choose to um, add that on to the things that you're already doing in your rituals and manifestations now if you guys want me to touch on flying ointments and the origins of broomsticks and where those things come from and why people think witches seem to fly on brooms definitely let me know and i can do a video all on that as well um but i did want to touch on it a little bit here um so way back when they actually had this thing called flying ointment and you still have it now today however the ingredients are quite different um but i do warn they are still quite dangerous to use so in my opinion i wouldn't use them um i i feel like there's different ways that you can get yourself to astro project and to get into trance work other than taking external sources um there is ways of doing it with your own body so and it, like breath works an excellent way However, witches back in the day used to take the end of the broomstick and cover it in this ointment that was actually made from extremely toxic things that would basically make you hallucinate um, and um, get into a trance-like state to then astral project um, or do trance work. A lot of times these included herbs like deadly nightshade, which is extremely dangerous and extremely toxic 
deadly even so I would definitely avoid doing that um, don't use toxic herbs please don't <laughs> please know your herbs um, and then they would take their broom and proceed to jump around um, the room or around the fields to um, literally help assist their spirit to leave the body and astral project or to get into trance and they were literally doing ritual um so i just thought it was like a really cool thing to take note there so and that was like an act of sex magic kind of in a way too because it was using that orifice space um as well and, you know we were doing it way back in the day where we were it, where we were owning our own bodies and our own sexuality and um, using it in rituals. So it's not just a new age thing, it's thing that's been happening for hundreds of thousands of years. They would also do this in fertility and harvest rituals to basically um, teach the crops how to grow tall and strong and grow upwards. Um, so I found that really interesting too. If you'd like a more in-depth video on the origins of that, definitely let me know in the comments and I will make a video on it. A few other ways to work sex magic is, as I noted earlier, is through writing. So with sigils, um, you can draw sigils and stare at them. You can draw sigils on your body through your beauty oils or your concealer before you blend it out. You can put intention and charm your makeup products if you are a person who wears makeup and enjoys it um, or chapsticks or anything you put onto your body to groom yourself you can charm your perfumes and your clones you can charm deodorant body wash whatever it is and add it into your beauty routine for protection or cleansing um, i do that with my body washes um, for uh, protection i use a really sharp eyeliners or certain color correspondences and you can do that for yourself as well when you are in your ritual state. A lot of people actually use abstinence and the avoidance of sex to stimulate their inner power as well as a way to preserve their inner essence. I've seen this in a lot of athletes. They actually abstain from intercourse and sexual relationships with their partners and loved ones until they um, have finished a game because they believe it helps to propel them to a successful game. And um, there are so many other instances of this happening as well. So that's also an option if you're a person who feels like your autonomy in your sexual energy would be better um, nurtured through abstinence first or forever, it's up to you. Um, definitely think about that as well. So I definitely would encourage making a love altar for the inner goddess and sex priestess within you, or you can make an altar for the love goddess that you like to work with or just love and sex and creation energy in itself. Um, it really, you can take any like viewpoint on this and it will work either way. Uh, you can, there are so many different ways you can do sex magic. You can do it in group settings, um, in OGs. Um, I'm not sure if I can say that word. Um, we know what I'm trying to say. Um, you can do it through self-simulation, um, through a partner and you both working through your own inner goals or I think more powerfully on like one set goal that is mutual um, so that you're both sending that energy to the same source and it's extra powerful. You can paint symbols all over your body and your partner's body. You can work with Tantra, you can work with you can work with breathing exercises. There's so many different ways to really utilize sex magic. So that is the video, my loves. Um, I really hope that you dive into this and give it a try. Um, let me know what you think about this video down below and if it's something that you're interested in trying. I just thought because it is the month of love and I'm so into the energies right now that I would touch on this and start talking more about the archetypes of the, the divine feminine and um, start talking about 
uh, the sexual liberation of yourself. Um, I find I can talk on these types of things for hours without a whole lot of notes, so I really found it super fun to talk about with you guys, and if you enjoyed it, please let me know. Give it a big thumbs up, share it to somebody else that you think would really benefit this video. Um, your friend, your partner, your fellow coven if you're into um, working together with sex magic or you're thinking about it in your coven um, that's totally okay too because there are covens out there who may be inclined to do this type of thing um, and let me know if you want more videos I love you guys so very much uh, this video was so much fun if you want more videos on archetypes definitely let me know and I can make it a series and I will see you guys in my next video next week stay wicked and I love you. Bye.